A pastor in North Carolina has been arrested on some pretty serious charges, but what exactly was his plan here? What he said with his arrest is very strange, but was he actually arrested in the state of North Carolina or was it somewhere else? We're going to get into all the details here in just a second, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, there's multiple ways you could do that now. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You can become a monthly contributor by joining the Patreon at patreon.com slash notbysightnews, that link in the description. Or you can also help us out on our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video as well, and all videos. Why do we have a GoFundMe? Well, I share this with you guys, and I, I've been promising to keep you updated on everything, and we started the GoFundMe to help out with the stacking medical bills right now that my wife and I are currently facing, as well as all other bills. We're just trying to keep the lights on at this point, but... It was back in August, my wife, who was only 39, had suffered a stroke. And no, it was not because she took the juice. Neither did I. A lot of people were just making wild speculation, just assuming they know her history, which they don't. So I always have to say this now when I, when I talk about it. But doctors determined that the stroke was caused by an endocarditis, a vegetation buildup on her heart, where a piece of that had broke off to the brain, which caused the stroke. Also with that, a clotting disorder that they linked with it as well. So she's now gonna to have to be on blood thinners for the rest of her life. But in an effort to get that vegetation cleared up, they had come up with a six week treatment plan of antibiotics where she had a pick line installed in her arm that goes just right above the heart to uh, have two different antibiotics, try and get that cleared up. After being in the hospital for a week and then only being home for two days, she developed an allergic reaction to the first set of antibiotics, which ended up starting off as a rash and then it spread to like a full blown herb, like blown up like a balloon, uh, swelling like crazy. It was one of the scariest things that we had ever witnessed. So we had to go back to the hospital again for another week. The majority of the month of August for us was spent in the hospital. And uh, after spending another week there, doctors decided to put her on a different set of antibiotics, which they started out with that and everything seemed good. Uh, she got out of the hospital after another week. And unfortunately we weren't reunited for very long as I picked up some bug in the hospital after again, basically being there with her the whole time. Uh, so she had to stay with some other family. So she didn't catch anything from me. Uh, then after finally being reunited again, after several days, a couple days later, she ended up getting another side effect to the new antibiotics, which this one was also very severe. It affects the muscles. It's this muscle breakdown and deterioration of the muscles. And, and it's just, it's extremely scary. She ended up being in just immense amounts of pain, agony at times, she said. Doctor said, get off immediately. That one antibiotic, which they knew was a side effect of what could happen with these muscle aches. Uh, and so now she's currently only on one antibiotic to the heart, but now an infectious disease doctor and rheumatologist are, are trying to figure out, you know, uh, what else to add with this regimen. They're, they're also, you know, testing to see if she may have possibly lupus. There's so much going on right now, and it's just, it's so much of a difficult time for us because we don't really know what's happening. Thank God the pain has started to subside, so we're, we're very thankful for all of your prayers in that. She's, she's gone down pretty, pretty good um, as far as being comfortable, so she's able to get around and move again in her arms and everything like that, which were the worst of it. Um, so we're, we're thankful for that, but we need your continued prayers um, as we continue to go through this storm. And whatever donations you guys are able to do to help us out is so much appreciated. Again, you can do it through GoFundMe, Patreon, or the Super Thanks on YT. We just we love you all for your kind words and support and prayers, and just it all means so much to us. So thank you guys um, from the bottom of our hearts. So let's get into this. David McGee, 61 years old, is the pastor of the Bridge Fellowship Church uh, just outside of Winston Salem, North Carolina. And he was arrested on August 20th. Now, this information just coming out, but for David McGee, he was not arrested in North Carolina. In fact, he made a trip to Las Vegas where he was staying at the Strat Hotel. And this is where police had learned about information that, well, David McGee was, uh, was packing 
if you know what I mean. And I'm not talking about his suitcase to go back home to North Carolina. Now, uh, many in the hotel had seen McGee in prior days before his arrest, uh, where he was, you know, carrying a piece with him. And upon that, they also suspected that he had powder with him in his room, if you know what I mean. So after, you know, warning McGee multiple times to get that stuff out of the hotel, he would not listen. Police were contacted and went into the hotel room and they, they even asked McGee, you know, do you, you got a piece on you? He did. He admitted that he had it in his guitar case. But McGee said that he had come to Las Vegas to look for his daughter, that he had actually flown to Las Vegas on his private jet. So I don't know if that's true or not, because it's a lot of the stuff that he was saying was just crazy. I mean, a lot of pastors have jets now, so I mean, I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility. But he said he flew to Las Vegas specifically to find his missing daughter, who he believed was staying in a some sort of a flood tunnel. And his plan, when he found her, like a flood-controlled tunnel, and his plan was to give her the powder. I, I don't get it. Like, wh th this guy is obviously, this so-called pastor is obviously out of his mind here. And police also found that not only did they find the powder, but they found an AR with a scope. And so police said in a statement that what this looked like to them was that David McGee, a so-called pastor, may have been looking to repeat a horrible tragedy that we saw from Las Vegas many, many years ago. I mean, why would you have what he had, you know, with the scope and all of that? Obviously, this guy was up to something evil. And thank God for the hotel staff that noticed this, that reported it to authorities, and they immediately got there and shut this guy down. I don't know, you know, how he ever became a pastor. I don't really know the history. Uh, we have not heard a statement from the church. Now, I, I welcome anybody. If you are someone that has attended David McGee's church there in North Carolina and you want to chime in on this, I mean, the comment section will be open for you to do so. Uh, but so much of it, the fact that the guy had powder and all, all this other stuff, like had the, the AR with the scope. I mean, my, thank God this was halted and stopped because it could have been really, really bad. I don't even know if his daughter really lives in Vegas or if it's just what he said. I mean, he, he obviously wasn't right in the head. Um, and this guy, to me, no doubt had demons going through him. Uh, but thankfully, uh, he's been taken into custody. So uh, we'll see where this all goes from here. I welcome your thoughts on this in the comments section. Again, whether you attend, maybe you do attend his church or you attended in the past. I, I just, I love to get people's thoughts and insight that are close to these, these stories and situations because uh, it's always good to get their perspective. You get a little bit more background sometimes too into, you know, these guys' character and, and you know, were there any signs of anything weird going on with him prior to the arrest on August 20th? Uh, so you guys can, can chime in in the comments. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, remember we have multiple ways of doing that now. You could do the GoFundMe. That helps out me and my wife right now in her time of recovery uh, from her stroke. You know, she's not going to be able to work for a while. We don't have any of her paychecks coming in. Uh, and originally, you know, we thought she'd be able to go back after the six weeks. That still could happen. But now with the treatments and different things, I don't know with the setbacks, it could be longer. So uh, again, we appreciate anything you can do to help us out through GoFundMe, through Patreon, through the Super Thanks on YT. It's all much appreciated. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves who occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. 
If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.